Hello everyone. In this video we'll be taking a look at another Mal Smizer mystery. What was the reason for Gak leaving the band? Did he get kicked out or did he live by his own decision? Is he still in contact with other members? I'll try to answer this question based on all the available information. Also, just to get this out of the way, I decided to set up a Patreon account. Uh, my channel is not monetized, so if you like to support my content, you can donate to me there. Of course, I'm not forcing you to do this, my financial situation is fine, but I'll be going to college, so, you know, any additional income will be appreciated. Link to it will be in the description. When you read Malice Miser's Wikipedia page, all it says is that Kak left the band suddenly. No reason was given, but after just 4 months he would release his first solo EP. Kak's Wikipedia page says that, according to his autobiography, the members' differences, the sudden income of money and his isolation from the band led to his departure. The citation leads to Jihaku, Kak's autobiography written in 2003. This doesn't really give us much to work with, because you can't view most of the book and even if you could, it's written in Japanese. Luckily, I was able to find an English translation of the book. If you're interested in reading it, you can find a link to an archive of it in the description of the video. In section 3, chapter 1, titled The Truth About My Departure from Miles Miser, we learn Gak's side of the story. When I talk about Miles Miser, even now in my heart there are complicated feelings. Since I went solo, a part of me has hoped that one day I will be able to talk with you about Miles Miser again. Miles Miser is still something that I take pride in, and I wouldn't change a thing. As a band, I was proud of the many and varied things we came to represent, and the members were each extraordinary individuals. I joined in the fall of 95, and Miles Miser, which was experiencing conditions that had it at the brink of breaking up, began the revival tour. It was almost two years till our major debut. We even realized our dream of playing at the Budokan. Miles Miser was able to do it. We were able to conquer Asia. I thought that there was nothing that could go wrong in my dream. However, there was obviously a point from where our gear started going out of order. At that time, it was around the end of the Visual K boom period. Though there were many bands who did not want to say that they were visual, I said clearly, we are Visual K. There was no resistance at all to me saying that. If I think about it now, the cause of Malice Miser's breakup was my own individualism and self-confidence, and the widening difference between things that the other members were concerned about. The first time our relations became strange was when the performance at the Yokohama Arena was drawing near, July 95. The final straw was when I wrote the music to Les Ciel. Until then, I was going to be the lyrics writer, and either Mana or Cosi was going to write the music. Les Ciel was the first time I became a member that handled both the music and the lyrics. Among the members, I was the only one who kept doing more of this kind of text, and I completely isolated myself. When I was honest with myself, I was shocked. Within the members of the band, with it being me versus the other four members, we parted ways cordially. There was no mediator, and no one followed up on me. Though I said, shouldn't I have done what I did with Lesiel? A short time later, I really wanted to go back to the band, but in the end that didn't happen. But above everything was the problem of money. Money is a dreadful thing. I learned all about this when I was working as a host. Uh, that is, a uh, house and dealer in a casino, not the type of house that, you know, goes to bars and makes women spend all their money on him. Suddenly, if you gain a whole lot of it, you'll pass into the face of not caring about the value of anything. When Malice Miser went major, even though we were making lots of money, my heart wasn't shaken, but that wasn't true for everyone. When you make a lot of money, some people drift away, some people get closer. When that happens, rumors get whispered around and people change. In the band, when we started making more money, I told the other members about the mistakes I had made in the past. I said, money will definitely make you do strange things, so please wake up. Then one day in 1998, around when the summer hit was beginning to cool, they called a members meeting. Though usually at the meetings only members attended, that day when the appointment time came, all of the other members and the president of the office were all there and waiting for me. Why is the president at a members meeting, I ask, and someone answered, because Malice Miser is over. We can't work anymore with you. 
In that instant, I didn't really feel anything much, so I said that I would like Malice Miser to continue even if I did quit, but the band's answer was, at any rate, just that they were unable to do that. Alright everyone, I will say no more, I won't be obnoxious. In this case, I couldn't say that. If this was the end, there was also a way to erase that. No matter what would happen at the end, could I shut the curtain in the face of the fans that have helped me along until now? That was the most important thing. As I was saying these things, someone else started saying nasty things. Isn't it good enough that we put out a CD? We're selling copies, at least. At those words, I got angry. Don't joke around. Don't make fun of the fans. In my anger, I got up from my seat and left. The sadness that I felt even more than the anger was accounting for most of what I did. I was miserable. This is the truth about my departure from Malice Miser. This is not a story for me to cast blame, it was a problem of suddenly having too much money, of the members' differences of consciousness, of a driving obsession. Malice Miser is what I once was and an anxiety that made me what I wasn't. There were things that weighed heavily on us and they became a vicious circle and ended up hurting everyone. There was no other way back then, this is the only thing I can believe. So, to summarize, according to Gekt, Malice Miser disbanded because they were making too much money and Gekt was trying to save everyone from going crazy. Gekt got angry at one of the members because he disrespected their fans, so he just got up from his seat and left, never to be seen by these greedy cunts again. Makes sense, right? Not really when you consider the fact that Malice Miser wouldn't disband up until a few years after Gekt's leaving. Gekt is being very overdramatic in his book. It becomes very apparent when you read the next chapter, which is about Kami's death. It was right before the beginning of summer, in the middle of a photoshoot. I suddenly felt something terrible. I was dizzy and I couldn't stand up. I thought it was something to do with my intuition, if something had happened to a loved one. I called all of my friends and relatives. Everyone said nothing was wrong, nothing was going on, but the weird sad feeling couldn't go away. When my friends and family left and I was alone again, a phenomenon occurred. I became really worried that someone had died, but who I didn't know. It was just very painful. It hurt to breathe and my breathing became very irregular, to the point where I just couldn't do any of my daily activities. One week afterwards, the official announcement of Kami's death was made. Okay, are you serious right now? This motherfucker literally went... I felt a great disturbance in the force. As if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. I fear something terrible has happened. Like, this guy pulled out a fucking episode 3 Yoda. So yeah, this book doesn't seem like a reliable source of information. In a 1999 interview, when asked about what happened between Gekt and the other members of Malice Miser, Mana responded. Having done with the Marvel Egg concept, a member meeting is held to decide on what's up next. A certain article mentioned of how he said, let's continue without taking a break, but we've never heard that, nor did we say, we want to rest. In reality, we needed time to think, and so we decided to set aside a period of time to replenish our strength after some discussion. During this type of conversations, differences in opinions occur between him and the other four members, and he didn't come to the meetings anymore. Yeah, that sounds similar, but also way different than what Gakt said, doesn't it? Let's read further. After Malis Miser's major debut started, Gakt changed as if making a sudden turn, for both good and bad. Perhaps humans will change when the situation changes, but I think the basic points won't. The new says. Our office was not set up only yesterday or today, it's the most obvious thing. Indeed, the record company is very understanding to us and great productions were created without compromising. We did all that without having any confrontations with the office nor the record company. But in a certain article, what he said of something like the confrontation with the office, how such words came out is strange, but I guess that can be helped. Kami said. Meetings after meetings will stop around a catch-up from there, but he's the only one who will leave. Things such as trust began to drop. He said, I love Malice Miser, but how is that he would take such an action? It's unbelievable. Mana. 
Perhaps that's what he wanted to do, for his personality as an artist has been greatly recognized. When he's performing the Marvele concept as an artist on stage, complicated personal emotions are completely left out. Tami, because there's trust in the music. Mama. However, this is the limit. Most parts of the concepts that have been cracked until Marvele are done in the past. To create new things, a trusting relationship is very important. Countless meetings have brought up the fact that this is lacking. Gek disappeared around November last year, despite having work to do. There's lots on the schedule, but we don't know where to contact him, and it remained that way. But we continued waiting for him, but it seems as if he came up a betrayal kind of manner. It's sad and regrettable. Kozi said, Gentlemen in those meetings, then all of a the sudden he didn't come anymore. Mana. That's why, please do not believe things like we drove him out, etc. Now, it's up to you to choose whose side of the story you believe. Whether you choose to believe Gekt or the other members, also keep in mind that both of them could be lying. As far as I know, none of them ever mentioned the circumstances of Gekt's leave ever again. So, are the other members on good terms with Gekt now? In the Rock and Read 77 magazine, published in April 2018, Mana talk about getting in contact with Gekt. So, you contacted Gekt? Yes, I made up my mind to call him. We've had absolutely no contact since his sudden departure and subsequent withdrawal from the group. It seems like it's widely believed that Miles Miser won't do a comeback because I, as the leader, never forgave Gekt. And then he laughed. There were some magazines who published articles like that from time to time. Still, as for what's real and what isn't, I think there are some people who understand. After all, some of the music magazines ask for our thoughts and feelings at the time of the withdrawal. It's true that there are things you don't dare say because of the circumstances, or things it's better not to say. I remember there was a lot going at the time. And during all of that, did you have a way of getting in contact with Gekt? No, I didn't. Whether I forgave him or not is a different problem, but back then I didn't really want to talk to him. I did some research, mulled it over and put everything together. And then I called him. About when was that? It was a year before the 20th anniversary, so 2011. As a result, nothing came of it, but we started into preparations to do something. I met with Gagd himself, gathered the other members and we even went out to dinner together. So you wanted to take your time and get everything in order. What kind of plan did you come up with? Actually, there was going to be a continuation to the life at the Yokohama Arena, Gex's last life as a member. We'd have kept going from there and continued on to Tokyo Dome. We had the schedule for Tokyo Dome just about pinned down, but as you know, then Get left the group and the whole thing flew out of the window. We started off discussing the possibility of trying for it one more time, and that critical juncture 20 years later. It wasn't just us members, we had meetings with staff and started working out a concrete plan. It was going pretty well, but then, well, stuff happened. The project came to a standstill. Well, circumstances changed and Get could no longer do it. Nothing more could be done, so we didn't really do much for the 20th anniversary. And afterwards, the 30th anniversary would have been a long way off. Honestly, I have no way of knowing what things would be like 5 years from now. So we decided to make the 25th anniversary and do a Miles Miser anniversary. It's not a revival and it's different from what we had planned for the 20th anniversary, but we added the title Miles Miser 25th Anniversary Special on the Moadi Moa Deep Sanctuary event. And we invited our roadies who stuck by us to be guest singers. In an August 2018 interview, Gak said, I used to be part of Miles Miser, but they kicked me out. After a year, the group disbanded, because they could not produce original songs. I wrote almost all the songs ever since I joined Miles Miser. Shortly after the band disbanded, my best friend, who was the drummer, suddenly passed away. Okay, this is just false. Gakt wrote lyrics to most Miles Miser songs, but only composed music for two of them. And Kami passed away two years before the band disbanded. Sounds pretty mean, doesn't it? In 2020, Gek publicly mentioned Mana for the first time in 20 years, basically just to call him short. In 2021, in a legendary interview with the Anime Man, Gek talked about his feeling towards Miles Miser and pretended that he's the only living member of the band. 
Most my other members, they were great guys, wonderful, talented. I really miss them. Mm. Actually, I mourn uh, their passing. They made a rest in peace, <laughs> and uh, the from from my from the bottom of my heart. Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's wait. Let's let's, <laughs> yeah, let's 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 back up for a second here. You were in a band called Malice Mazza with how many members were there? Well, I don't know, six or seven. So, <laughs> You don't, you don't remember how many people were in your band? No. Well then, let's, let's just say six or seven. And including you, how many are still alive? Only me, right? They're all alive. They're still alive. Oh, really? I oh, heard they passed away. I don't know. I think, I think the last time I checked the Wikipedia, they were still alive. Really? Yeah, yeah. I think you should contact your, oh. your buddies. Just to make sure they're okay. Oh, really? Yeah. It's a little, it's a little worrying. Oh. Okay, next, next, okay. next question. <laughs> a few months later, Gekt uploaded a video of him making a home-cooked meal for the first time in 20 years. This appears to be an obvious parody of Mana's cooking videos, with Gekt not saying anything throughout the whole video and making similar gestures to the one Ms. Mana makes. Gekt made a few more mentions of Malice Miser around this time. In a thread on the escape forums, a user claimed that at some meeting a fan mentioned Gekt's name to Mana, resulting in Mana's facial expression changing to something of a disappointed one. However, in 2022, Shinya, the drummer of Duran Grey, mentioned Gekt while taking a walk with Mana, and Mana didn't seem to mind it at all. <laughs> you might have seen this video of Gakt singing Gekka no Yasukyoku in 2022, but that's not actually Gakt, that's an impersonator. I like it, Kaji. However, Gakt did sing Bel Air on a live stream in 2022. Speaking of live streams, on a recent one, Gakt talked about Mana's guitar problems. So, to summarize, the circumstances of Gakt leaving the band are not clear, but it can be assumed that there's no bad blood between him and the other members anymore, despite him poking fun at them from time to time. Will we ever see Gakt performing with them again? Maybe. But probably not anytime soon, given how Gekt is currently recovering from dysphonia, a neurological vocal condition that prevents him from singing. And that would be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you think I missed something important, let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you want. Thank you for watching and goodbye.